Hey guys, this is Matt, and I'm back with another Shooter on Rails tutorial where I'm going to be talking about making a turret. Let's take a look at the game. So, first, notice that the turrets are always aimed at the ship, no matter where it is on the screen. And they're going to be shooting these projectiles that whenever you stand still, they always hit. But if you move around, they start to miss. Alright, so let's take a look at the turret object. This one. First, notice that it has a sphere collider on it, and this represents the range of the turret. And if we go in more, the script is actually only on the top of the turret. That way we can keep the base stationary while only moving uh, this little turret gun here. So here is our turret. We have a projectile type that it shoots. Right now it's shooting missiles. We probably are going to add some other missile types that turrets can shoot. It also has a shooting speed, and then it also has an aim rotation speed. And this will actually uh, affect the way that this turret, how fast it rotates. So notice that this one is going a lot slower than the other ones. So that's just a little bit of a configuration option there. And that's about it for these objects, so let's take a look at some scripts. Inside of our turret script, the first thing that we have are our public variables, where we have the projectile type, which you saw, the shoot speed, and the aim rotation, along with a private variable, which is the target. So as soon as the ship collides with the sphere collider of the turret, it's going to set the target equal to that ship, and whenever they exit the collider, then it's going to set it equal to null. So let's go ahead and take a look at the on trigger enter. As soon as something enters the collider, we need to check to make sure that it's actually the ship. So we're going to get the tag of the object and make sure it equals the tag of the player. And we get that from our tags in a num, and that just equals player ship, which is the tag that's on the player ship. So after that, we set the target equal to the game object, and then we start our two coroutines, aim and fire. So if we take a look at aim up here, while the target is inside of the radius of the turret, then we're going to uh, we're going to look at it basically. So we get the target direction, which is the target's position minus our position. Then we find the new direction by rotating towards give it our forge direction, the direction we want to face, and then the time interval that we want to get there in. And after that, we're finally going to set our rotation by using quaternion look rotation and giving it that new direction. Then we wait for the end of the frame and do it all over, as long as the uh, target is inside of the radius of the turret. And looking at fire, we have something that's very similar. While the target is inside of the radius, the first thing we're going to do is wait for seconds, and this is going to make our shoot interval by using the shoot speed with the wait for seconds. And since we did that first, we're going to have to check to make sure that there's still a target available by uh, doing another null check. And if that passes, next thing we need to do is get the projectile that we're going to be shooting. Since we only have the projectile type, which is an enumeration, again, that we got from our tags and the nums, projectile type equals missile. So we're going to do a projectile dot get projectile inside of our projectile class, projectile type, and this. And this is part of uh, the object pulling that I've been doing for our projectiles. So I'm not going to go over this right now because it uh, takes a little while. But all you need to know is this is going to get the projectile that this turret shoots. And now we need to actually find out where do we need to shoot this projectile. Because if we shoot directly at where the player is right now, the player is moving with the camera, so it's going to miss. So we need to find the projectile's movement vector by normalizing the projectile's transform and the target's transform position. Now we need to get our ship move vector by using our get movement vector method inside of our camera movement script. So if we go to that real quick, all we have is a get movement vector where we basically check to make sure there are waypoints available. And if there are, then we're going to do another normalize with the current position of the camera minus the next waypoints position. So same way we've been getting all the other movement vectors. Now the next thing we need is our ship velocity. And we calculate that by multiplying the ship movement vector by the speed of the camera since the ship is always moving forward at the same speed that the camera is. And then we need to reverse that because it's actually backwards. Now is where we do some of the more heavy calculations inside of this method, find intercept vector. So let's go and take a quick look. This involves uh, a lot of math, so I'm not going to explain it all. 
but I will put a link in the description to where I got this method from. That's a pretty good tutorial on there about this. So what you need to give it is just the origin shot, the speed of it, the position of the target, and the target's velocity. And in the end, it's going to return the vector that you need to shoot at to intercept the target. And now that we have our aim vector, we're just going to start a coroutine inside of our projectile. The intercept coroutine inside of our projectile class is what's going to make the projectile move from the turret across its movement vector. So we're going to take the original position of the projectile before we start our while loop so that we know when to exit. And then while the distance from our origin to our current position is less than the self-destruct distance, and the projectile hasn't hit the object, we're going to calculate our step size by multiplying our speed times the delta time. Then we're going to manipulate our position by creating a new vector where we multiply our current position by the movement vector times the step, step size. After that, we just need to wait for the next frame and do it again until one of these conditions is true. After we exit, we need to set hit object to false, just in case it was set to true, and we need to return the object to the object pool. And I'll go over this in a later tutorial. Let's take a quick look at the projectiles on trigger enter. So if the object entering the collider has the player tag, then we're going to set hit object to true. And this is what will exit that while loop, along with traveling farther than the self-destruct range. That's about it for our turrets. See you next time.